Check it out. What's going on, Eric? How are you, my friend? What's going on with Atlas Air? Yeah, Atlas Air. Um, they've been in the news all week, and now, uh, now, big, uh, big announcement this morning. Just breaking news. Uh, we can talk about here on the show. They just uh, got acquired uh, by some uh, big, large uh, private equity firms. So, Eric, I guess you want the details? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Right. That's. Uh... That's pretty cool. So, I mean, we've been talking about mergers and, and growth in, in air cargo, et cetera, and even, you know, Maersk buying airplanes and so on and so forth. Uh, why this route now? Well, it's interesting, you know, um, like you said, the air cargo sector is showing, you know, fundamental strengths uh, into the future. So it's kind of future proof. Uh, some people see it because just global trade uh, growing at, you know, at a steady pace and then kind of, uh, you know, spurred further by e-commerce and, and if you're in the express uh, delivery set area. So there's a lot of need for freighters, um, which we can get into more. But, um, you know, investors in recent years have been pouring money into more of the aircraft themselves. So leasing companies and then taking those uh, planes, uh, used planes and converting them into, um, you know, cargo jets and then leasing them to various airlines. So that's been kind of the route for a couple of years. So this is kind of new where some big investors are coming in and buying an actual airline. So you have uh, Apollo Global Management, one of the largest private equity firms around. They're uh, listed on the New York Stock Exchange. And then they've got um, a couple other partners, uh, JF, uh, JF Lehman and another company um, doing this deal for apparently uh, five, it looks like it's about $5.2 billion, at least of enterprise value with a share per share uh, price of 102, more than $102 per share, which is a 57% premium to their previous 30 day trading average. So, you know, it's just a strong market and there's a lot of money sitting out there. Valuations are might be down a little bit with the stock markets, you know, kind of in close to bear territory. So maybe they think they can get kind of a good deal. Now, Eric, a lot of times when we see acquisitions within trucking, uh, we see that sometimes that those that acquire the companies don't quite understand the dynamics of the industry that happened with trucking. Do you think this is going to be a little bit different when we see the dynamics playing out with air cargo? Well, I mean, in this particular case, you know, probably not much is going to happen. The management team will stay on. You know, I don't think they'll micromanage this company too much. Um, they also, uh, Apollo management has experience with uh, airlines and cargo to a certain degree. They owned or is still partially owned before spinning off Sun Country Airlines. It's a it's a you know passenger leisure airline, but that recently in the last couple of years started flying some small some seven three seven package jets for Amazon. So it's a new new business for them. It's not their core, but uh, Apollo's got that, and they also own have a big investment in Swissport, which is a ground handling company at airports. They provide you know lounge services, ground services, cargo handling. So they you know they have some experience with the uh, aviation industry. So, Eric, you know, we, we touched on this a, a bit is, you know, the, the expansion and what we've seen in, in the industry is to buy more capacity, right? We haven't seen, uh, why has it been that way instead of acquisition? Um, buy more capacity just through, um, yeah, through yeah, the aircraft. Yeah, well, through, the, through the aircraft instead of mergers, acquisitions, that type of stuff. Yeah, that's a good question. I, I don't know. It's just, you know, maybe, you know, it's not as big of a investment. You can incrementally get in, you know, bit by bit. And, um, you know, you you don't have to manage the operation. You just lease out the plane to someone else who takes on the operational risk. So, um, and, you know, conversions and the number of aircraft you buy are, you know, can be incremental as you build up. So buy, buying a whole airline, airline is, is, you know, more expensive or more that you have to put down or finance all at once. But, um, you know, I don't know. I think there's, you know, and, and then, you know, there's all sizes of airlines, right? So this is a, a pretty big deal, a pretty big cargo airline. There's mm -hmm. you know, a lot of smaller ones out there. 
And Eric, with some of the smaller ones, do you see a little bit more activity potentially down the line uh, in this segment with more acquisitions, maybe some mergers happening? You know, that, that's an interesting question. I guess we'll have to see. I, you know, if Air Cargo is becoming less of a, of a sidelight business and more, you know, there's more structural trend for growth. I, yeah, I could see some mergers or, you know, other airlines making some, you know, strategic acquisitions. I mean, you never know. There hasn't been a groundswell for it, but, you know, the market's changed. The pandemic changed everything. So, you know, it's definitely something to keep an eye on. Um, I actually, I should mention also today that Atlas just dropped their earnings for the second quarter, which they were supposed to do tomorrow, but um, they dropped them today with this announcement. So they had a pretty good first quarter. Um, adjusted EBITDA was about $215 million, slightly down from a year ago because they've had some COVID, uh, you know, they couldn't fly quite as much with some of their pilots getting COVID and uh, they flew some fewer hours with their 737s, which I think they fly for Amazon and some others, so some of their smaller gauge aircraft. But overall, a really, a really strong quarter as usual for them uh, for the last several years during the pandemic. Nice. What's their outlook looking into the future and the industry uh, overall? Well, that's interesting. They they said that they are not putting out any outlook. They're not having an earnings call, no mm. guidance for the rest of the year after this big deal. So they're kind of going silent. But, you know, industry wide, the outlook is for a pretty, pretty relatively strong peak season, second half of the year. So, you know, it's been summertime. Normally, the doldrums in air cargo, although it's still been a good year versus, uh, you know, pre-pandemic. But, uh, you know, the outlook is, should be pretty good for the airline, for the uh, cargo carriers and into next year. So we'll definitely see some softening as the economy and potential recession is around the corner. But overall, it should still be pretty good. A few more moments. Can you touch on the story about the U.S. moving to confiscate a jet with Iranian ties? Right. Uh, that's, you know, that was an interesting uh, uh, development yesterday um, or Tuesday afternoon. The Department of Justice announced that they were going after this old Boeing 747-300, which the 300s weren't very, uh, they didn't produce that many of them. Um, it's an, about a 36-year-old aircraft that had been owned by an Iranian carrier, and they sold it to a, a Venezuelan carrier that's owned by the Venezuelan government. Both Iran and Venezuela aren't uh, on the favorite list of the U.S. government. Uh, you know, they have a lot of uh, foreign policy disputes with those countries. Uh, you know, the Iran is, uh, you know, got terrorism links and so forth. So there, there were sanctions on both these airlines, including uh, you know, the Iranian airline, because they uh, flew or carried out missions for the uh, Revolutionary Guards, which are classified as a terrorist organization by the U.S. So they've been sanctioned. And so the U.S. discovered that Iran had sold or this company had sold the plane to Venezuela and transferred the plane and that's a violation of the export controls that we have in place. If you move anything that's U.S. made like that, that's under sanction, just moving it across the border is an export violation. You need to get permission. So the plane happened to be in Argentina, and the Argentinian authorities were holding it. And now we're, uh, the U.S. government asked Argentina to seize the plane and, and turn it over. So we'll have to see how that develops. Yeah, it's interesting. It was uh, auto parts with a crew of 17. Is that what it was? Yeah, apparently five Iranians and the crew of 17, which is, um, I mean, nobody needs that many people to fly a 747. You know, you got a couple pilots, maybe, a, you know, um, you know, another flight uh, person, um, you know, so three or four people. And um, so, yeah, there was some media talk by some of the wire services that maybe there was some espionage going on. There was a lot of you know, the, the whole reason the plane was there was a little fishy. So, you know, I think that's still the Argentinians are still sorting that out. Gotcha. Definitely an interesting story here, Eric. And what are you going to be looking to for the rest of the week here? I know it's Thursday. We have Friday tomorrow. Are you going to be focusing on this Atlas Air story or are you going to be looking at anything else? Yeah. Yeah, Atlas Air, then they're kind of their 
partner in crime or rival air transport services group, which also is an outsourced contract carrier uh, for air cargo services um, that flies for Amazon and other um, express companies. They're reporting later at the end of uh, at the end of the market today, and then so we'll try and cover them. Lufthansa just came out with their preliminary or, or you know partial earnings report for the second quarter. So there's just a lot uh, going on in that space, and uh, and then there's just some you know market news and how the you know June and July were as far as air cargo demand. We've had some numbers trickling in, so try to get to those. Excellent stuff. Thank you so much, Eric. You have a wonderful rest of your day and weekend. Check out uh, Eric's stuff on FreightWaste.com and American Shipper. Always uh, interesting. And like you said, there's a lot of information coming out. So I'll be watching that to get your take on this. We'll catch up with you uh, next week, my friend. All right. Take care, gentlemen. Right on. Thanks. Interesting stuff, my friend. 17 uh, crew member to fly uh, at 747 into Argentina. Not suspicious at all. No, not a suspicious Nothing going at all. on over here. You know who is very suspicious? Donnie Gilbert uh, and Tony Moon. There's a couple of suspicious characters. They shouldn't over there. be on camera together. They should not, but we're going we're gonna to attempt it anyways. Let's toss it over to them for the first carrier update of the morning.